crypto morning tea. Good morning, everybody. It's September 8th, 2021. My name's Piano Matty B. That's Garamucci. And this is your morning TA. A brief glimpse into the crypto markets where the sun's shining, where the wind's blowing, all the humble opinion of this piano. Zamboni, bring in the data. The FOMO index has dropped to 47 from yesterday's 79. A nosy Miss Nussbaum social media market sentiment in a rent control department in Queens is at 53%. The lowest it's been since we started this thing. Bitcoin dominance is at 42.8%. 24-hour volume is way up to 242.3 billion. And the overall market cap has dipped down to 198 trillion. Give or take a hundred million. Well, beware of what you wish for. <laughs> Seems rather appropriate right now. All last week we talked about low volume and how we won't see a big move until the ticket sales increase. And well, we got the volume all right. Through the roof, unfortunately, in the form of selling pressure. And what a barrage of pressure it was. After testing the 20 moving average, we popped back up. And like the coyote realizing it had run off the cliff, it waved bye-byes and started to fall. After not seeing the 50 moving average in over a week. It didn't stop in for coffee or even say hi. Just plunged past, yelled out the window, have you seen the 200 moving average? The 50 said, yeah, it's way down there. Okay, great, thanks. Continued down to take the knees out of the 200 moving average before making an impressive wick from 42.9 back up to close the candle. At 46.6. And I know what you're thinking, but Piano Matty B, that which once wicked will get candlesticked. Yes, the old wives' tale. I think it was on Friday I sheepishly commented on the wicks in the weekly just to get the wick elephant in the room out in the open. We see it play out perfectly here, which leaves us with the thought, Piano Matty B, if everything that once wicked will get candlesticked is maybe the truest TA you've ever talked about, then are we going down to the 38% Fib level of 42K again? Hmm. That's a great question, and thanks for asking. One of the reasons we see the old wives' tale play out is because the market has a memory, like a woman's scorn. Financial PTSD, if you will. When the SHIT hits the FAN, we regress back to our pain markers like a bad drunk who keeps drudging up the past. And how on this week you said this to me, and last week you did this. In this state of fear and panic, the emotional RPMs rev higher than in states of optimism and greed. In a state of fear and panic, it's like accidentally slipping from fourth gear into first and hearing the engine scream as the emotional RPMs redline. You look at the passenger with a look of confusion. I, I... <laughs> Not really know what's going on or what's making that engine scream. And then usually a series of hijinks and calamity ensues until you regain your composure, pop the clutch, bring her into neutral, then find the appropriate gear to continue on. The old wives' tale usually plays out in part at least due to the fact that most of these wicks fall on Fibonacci levels. On the weekly, the past two wicks we candlesticked live right on the 50% Fib level, while our current candle has wicked down almost inside the house of the 38% Fib. 
Now if the wives' tale plays out to completion, we'll get candlestick down to 42, and if you're so darn tootin', there's always the wick at the 23% level of 37.6. Now every time something like this happens, you see a lot of people cry manipulation. And while I love a great conspiracy angle as much as the next trader, I reserve my judgment until I see the outcome. And there can really only be two outcomes. And I rarely deviate from the mantra of, follow the money. So in the spirit of following money, one, it was a simple case of selling off to take profits. And no, there's nothing sexy about that angle, and frankly, just kind of ticks me off a bit. But because it ticks me off doesn't mean it's not a simple truth. The other outcome is if we see a quick reaction to the upside, which would negate the old wives' tale. We wouldn't candlestick these wicks, we would just shoot up insinuating that the sell-off was an orchestrated dump to reposition or buy at lower prices. Okay. I mean, it seems like a reasonable theory, I suppose. And as a member of the retail army of traders, one can just wait and see. Over on the daily, we're riding dirty on the 200 where we haven't been since August 19th. Yes, less than a month ago. Perspective is such a weird thing because it's so easy to lose sight of. Less than a month ago, we were celebrating this price. Now we're loathing it. And I get it. Who wants to go back in time or money? As adaptive creatures of innovation and forward progress, we want just that. Forward progress and anything less. It can feel like a personal attack on us. And depending how these two outcomes play out, a personal attack on us, it just might have been. So remember, we're playing the same game as our psychopathic elected lead. That's right, it's the long game. So zoom out and have a fantastic day. Bitboy Crypto.